Guys, welcome to another lesson of the opening series. In the last episode, I analyzed the Deutz Gambit, and today I'll continue with E4 setups, and I'll start by looking at Scotch Gambit. So while preparing to this video, I mean, what I saw on YouTube is just something insane, and if you watch those videos, I mean, uh, Whew, man, so what I saw is d4 takes knight g5 h6 knight f7 So I mean if you saw those videos and you liked us I mean guys, I would suggest you never play it again. Don't dare do this Don't try this at home, you know as those people say because if you're serious about chess improvement I mean that's the last thing you will play you want to learn how to play chess, how not to plunder pieces like that. And according to computer, it's actually bad for, for white, even though those experts suggest you playing it. So I just want to go with like more reliable options where, you know, you will play on, you won't get in trouble. You know, you won't blunder early on. You, you, you don't have to sacrifice your pieces in first and moves, which is, I mean, the biggest, I don't want to say cuss words, but I mean, if uh, anyone I've already suggested you if if you search it up and you know you looked at it, just don't play it. Knight of six and you know the last uh, series in the last lesson I analyzed Bishop G5 and today Knight of six. We won't go for Knight G5 or D3 setups. Instead, you know we'll go for this kind of aggressive D4 move and no more. I would say ambitious D4 move. So here, after e takes e4, you know, why have multiple options? So I will go with castle, but let me first show you what happens after e5. So you can play this as well. So the main move is d5. So after e5, again, if knight g4, knight g4 is not a good move, you'll go queen e2, let's say knight g4, queen e2, Queen e7, bishop f4, and let's say queen queen before knight d2. So, I mean, it's it kind of you know weird to have this knight on g4, and it will probably go back. Or you know there is a potential of this end game after bishop d6 takes takes, where black have two basically double pawns on d file, and after knight a3. Basically, knight b5 has been friend and white are slightly better. So, again, kind of weird. And after d5, which is the main move of the whole line, we play bishop b5, knight d4, and now we go knight d4. So, here again, the only move is basically bishop d7 takes takes, and now castle. So, and here, you know, white half, I mean, black have two options. Either go bishop e7, kind of more passive one. And let me show you what happens after this. Basically, bishop e7, f3. We'll go f3 next move either way. g5, f4, knight d4, knight c3, you know, trade knights. And now after castle, there is f5, c5, knight d2. And this knight is going to g3, h5. And, you know, white are slightly better in this situation. So, but here, Black have bishop c5, more active, you know, actually pinning this knight on this diagonal, and we'll play f3 anyways, knight g5, f4, knight d4, and now bishop e3, you know, setting up this blockade on d4, bishop b6, knight c3, trade straight again, castle, and now unfortunately, I mean, f5 is not the best option because of queen is 7 and you know, we have troubles with this pawn. Instead, you know, we'll go for a4, you know, trying to go for a5, a5 was played, rook e1, and basically, you know, the position is kind of equal. I don't think I have any advantage here at all, you know, black are absolutely fine, you know, it's kind of more of a draw, but I mean, due to the two bishops, I would prefer black in this situation, even though, you know, black have this beautiful center. So that's why in this position I like to go with d4 and then go with castle. So and here, you know, again, the Deutz Gambit, you know, bishop c5, we might get the same position after d4, e takes d4, right? So many people, guys, actually, like a lot of people will play bishop c5 in this move to keep the pawn on d4. But if you watch my last video on the Deutz Gambit, you will know that after e5, your opponent might not survive all the thunderstorm which is about to happen. So, 
I mean, you know, I had people play bishop c5 just to keep the pawn, but of course the best move is here is knight e4, but some people are afraid of this pin on the file, but I mean, it all works fine for black. Rook e1 is played, and again, the only move here is d5. So f5 just doesn't work, guys. I mean, there is bishop d5, and position slowly collapses, because after bishop g5, there is queen h5 this, and queen g5. You know, let's say this. You know, black are just in a very bad endgame spot. So, of course, that doesn't happen. And here the only move is of course d5, bishop d5, queen d5, and here we have knight c3. So there's actually, uh, after d5 there is actually knight c3 right away, but you know it's kind of more tricky and actually white are, you know, slightly worse uh, in comparison with uh, what I have after bishop d5 takes and knight c3, because basically here the idea is Knight c3 cannot be taken, and after d takes c3, there was a pin, so queen d5, and you know, white are winning the queen, and they're completely winning. So, knight c3, and here again, three options for this queen to go. So, the most popular one, which I'm facing a lot in online games, is of course queen a5. So, there's also queen h5, and also queen d8 back. Let's start by playing the most passive one, which is of course, let's let's not even queen d8, let's play queen d7, which is being suggested by the engine. Here, rook e4, we don't go for knight e4, again, it's a possible option, because we're setting up this knight f6, but after bishop e7, there are no troubles, so we'll actually go for rook e4, and after bishop e7, we'll play knight d4. And again, if uh, knight e4, rook e4, you know, white have no troubles, the position is somewhat equal. But let's say there is f5 played, rook f4, castle, and now knight c6 takes, knight d5, bishop d6, rook d4, bishop e6, c4, you know, getting this knight stable on d5, and after rook e8, bishop f4, you know, the position is kinda equal, we have this knight against this bishop. If bishop c4 is taken, there is rook c1, and unfortunately for black, they have this very, very bad pin. But, you know, of course, here, you know, black don't have to take it, and the position is somewhat equal. So, another option to analyze is, of course, very active queen h5. Again, let me know in the comments any questions you have. I can actually, you know, attach uh, this file in the description. Maybe I'll edit it after your comments. So again, let me know down below. Knight e4, so setting up this knight f6. Bishop f6, maybe I missed some lines. And here, bishop g5, not knight g5, as we'll see in the queen a5 line, but bishop g5. And, you know, Black have to choose between something like h6, bishop d6, a6, some weird moves. Let's say f6 is played. f6 is actually a blunder because after knight f6, you know, white are winning. There's also h6, but here we'll play bishop f6. You know, we keep the bishop on the board. The idea is basically we're trying to take. Of course, we won't take with, uh, let's say, something like. I'm not even sure, let's say a6, there's a3, and then something like queen g6, basically trying to take, there's knight h4, queen h7, and queen g3 again, you know, very weird, but, you know, whiter, slightly better again, and what else, so here, let's say bishop f6, bishop e7 actually, bishop e7, king e7, knight d4, and we're going to a slightly better endgame where black have this double pass pawns and the worst pawn structure, and also what I like about this endgame, we have this knight against this bishop, and potentially not b3, c4, c5, let's say this, 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 c4, this endgame looks very promising for white pieces. So, and the last option is of course the most popular one, queen a5. So, of course, you know, white can just take on d4, honestly, but, you know, there is nothing much after knight d4. Actually, you know, it's kind of complicated because after queen d4, 
there is some F5, you know, keeping this still on the board. And line goes like this, 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 we should G5. Very weird, you know, black managed to keep the piece on the board, even though white have some divination, have some compensation. So then you have a knight f4, bishop e6. Again, bishop e7 here is uh, quite possible, but bishop g5, castle takes, takes, knight f6 takes, and again, worse pawn structure. You know, white are kind of after rook c7, you know, we get this end game, we'll take on c5, potentially take on d4, look at double pass pawns on f and a file. So I would prefer to play with white pieces here, even though it's probably a draw after all. Bishop e6, knight g5, castle, knight d6, takes rook e6. And here, uh, I'm not even sure how many games I have played in this line. I have won a lot, definitely, I have lost a lot of them. So here, there are two main moves. I'll first start with bishop d6, which I have in my files when I was younger. Bishop g5, rook e8, this, and many people here play king d7, and you can't even imagine how many people played rook e1 in this position, including myself, because, well, I first started playing it, and then I first faced this position in uh, early ages of my chess career, and I played rook e1 in a very important game, and I completely forgot that basically black can take on e1 and have two rooks for the queen. And you know, I, I'm i not sure how I ended up in that game, but I think it, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm lost. So here, again, it's a possible line. Computer doesn't say that, okay, black are completely winning, because, I mean, it's equal. You know, two rooks are not better than the queen. Especially here where we have all the pawns in the board. So, but here, you know, I would prefer to play uh, basically rook e8 takes and queen d3, basically attacking this. h6, bishop d2, queen d5, c3, rook e4, king f1, queen f5, rook e1, takes, takes. And you know, the position is somewhat equal. No traps. Or cheeks are being set up. Bishop g7, you know. Here, why take the pawn? But even after taking the pawn, the position is still somewhat equal. Because again, we have this weak queen side. You know, we have this pawn on h2, which might be taken. We don't have any, you know, specific things, specific, you know, winning chances. So probably the game gonna end up in a draw. And another move aside from bishop g6 is h6. Basically, black have this bishop g6 idea, but they first make sure this bishop is not going to g5. Queen a2, queen a5, rook e4, g5, bishop d2, bishop d6, rook e1. Now we have all the heavy pieces in the middle of the board. You know, we are slightly better in this situation. Black will probably try to attack this but again you know they gotta spend some time doing this uh while let's say what we can do here is to play maybe a three before next couple of moves and then you know slowly maybe even trade queens and play this end game so again guys i told you there are no traps or anything like that so again let me know in the comments if you like this if it was boring for you if you play it or not again you know any feedback is a is, you know is a good thing so i hope you enjoyed let me know in the comments down below what you think and i'll see you in the next opening series let me know what you want me to analyze and i'll do it bye bye